An axial member consisting of two polymer bars is supported at C as shown. Bar 1 has a cross-sectional area of 750 square millimeter and an elastic modulus of 27 gigapascal. Bar 2 has a cross-sectional area of 1400 square millimeter and an elastic modulus of 15 gigapascal. Determine the deflection of point A relative to support C. <coughs> So here we are looking for how much is the total change in the position of A with respect to the support, which is point C. In other words, we need to see how much is the total change of length of that system. The right part of that system is fixed, the left part is moving. So I need to determine the change in the length of each, each of these two elements and then add them together. All right, the first step, is using the free body diagram. So determine the internal force in each element. The only way to do that is using the free body diagram. In bar one, I'm gonna cut that structure somewhere between A and B to make bar one free, like this. At the cut section, we put unknown force, and I will call that F1. A question, should I put that 90 kN force in this free body diagram? No, because I'm cutting this structure between A and B, and if I do that, and if I consider the left part, I don't see those two 90 kN forces. They are on the right part of that cut section. Okay? So I'm not gonna consider that in the free body diagram. Does that make sense? Okay, another question. If I cut my structure between A and B, can I consider the right part of this structure as a free body? Yes or no? Why not? Because it's attached to a strain, and it's not free. I can't consider that part. So the free part, in this case, is the left part. Okay. So everybody understood these two uh, important notes? Okay. Now, the simpler the simple part is determining the internal force, which is using the sum of the forces in x direction. So negative 70 plus F1 is 0, and that gives me F1 equal to 70 kN. Here, 70 kN got a positive sign, which means that force is tension. Similar to that, I will determine internal force in bar 2. To do that, I need to cut element to between B and C put unknown force in the cut section, like this. Remember, the force always goes outward from the surface, and use equilibrium equation. In this case, there are four forces acting on that free body. Um, some of the forces in x direction gave, give me negative 70 plus 2 times 90 plus F2 is equal to 0, and that gives me F2 equal to negative 110 kN. Here, the negative, negative sign stands for the compression force in that element. Any questions? This is typically the part that many students have difficulty. And the reason is, many students try to save time by avoiding the free body diagram part. They try to guess how much is the internal force. So please don't do that. All right, step number two, determining deformation in each bar. We use the equation that we just talked about. Delta is FL over EA. So for determining deformation in element number one, I will use associated parameters. Internal force in element number one is 70 kN. I need to convert that into neodon, so I will multiply that by 1,000. Length of element number one is 0.85 meter. I'm going to multiply that by 1,000 to convert that into a millimeter. Modular elasticity is 27 gigapascal. Again, I need to convert that into megapascal, so I'm going to multiply that by 1,000 uh, megapascal over gigapascal. And finally, area, which is given in this case, and that's 750 squared millimeter. Now I can determine the total deformation. If I work with appropriate unit, the final answer in deformation would be in millimeter. And in this case, the value is 2.938 millimeter. 
Similarly, I'm going to determine the deformation in element number 2, which is F2, L2 over E2, A2. Let's plug the values. F2 is 110 with the negative sign. I'm going to multiply that by 1000 again. The length is 1.15 meter. Modular plasticity is 15 gigapascal. And area is 1400 squared millimeter. And that gives me the total change in the length of element number 2 equal to negative 6.024 millimeter. Okay. These two deformations have opposite sign. The positive sign means that element number 1 elongates. And the negative sign for second element means that element number 2 is compressing. It, it, it gets shorter. How much is total movement of point A relative to C? In that case, I simply add deformations together. So delta at A is equal to delta 1 plus delta 2. And that gives me 2.938 minus 6.024, which is equal to negative 3.086 millimeter. Here, the negative sign means that the overall length of the element is getting shorter. So which direction does that point A move to? It moves to the right. So that point moves to the right. Does that make sense? Good question. Um, what would be movement of point B relative to A? B to A is delta 1. How much would be relative deflection of B to C? Delta 2. Okay? So we need to see what element connects these two points together. Point B and C are connected by element number 2. So the, deflect, the relative deformation would be delta 2. B and A connected by element number 1. So the relative deformation is delta 1. A to C is connected by two elements. So I add them together. Does that make sense? Good.